Hello Internet, Andrew Huang here again for LPX Studios. This is another full episode of, of How To, but I'm going to be revisiting uh, a video that I previously made, which is um, on the call forwarding feature. I've received several questions since sending that video out, and I decided to make another, another video that's going to address a lot of the questions I have received, as well as address some of the confusion, and then literally go through a full setup through my watch and my phone and do and then actually and actually show you how to do a test call to make sure that's working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally factory reset my Gear S and get rid of the Gear App Manager and as well as forget my Gear device on my phone. So I'm literally going to be starting from scratch, like you just got the watch and you're setting it up for the first time to show you how to set up the call forwarding and that. So, but before I dive in, some of the major questions I've received were about. I think there's a lot of confusion out there about what call forwarding is and actually how the watch works. So first thing I want to tell you is for those people who are on the Verizon network and on the Sprint and you just want to get the watch from AT&T because it's $200 to $100 less and you just but you you want to be able to talk through the watch and get your messages but you don't care about being away from your phone. You only care about just, you know, receiving you're gonna have your phone all the time with you but you want to be able to make those calls and receive messages for the for for you folks you are fine you don't even need to watch the rest of this video once you have connected your phone to your watch to your watch out of the box just like a normal gear device you're set because you can go ahead and make calls from the phone from the watch to send messages and everything because it's just like every other gear device that just has a microphone attached to it and a keyboard that's built into it. Uh, you can go ahead and do all that stuff because there's a confusion right now because people are asking me constantly that, am I, do I have to be tethered to the phone or do I not? And I, well, I, do I need cellular service to get the call forwarding or do I need cellular service to use it when I'm near my device? Like there's been, there's been some mixed communication. So I'm just clarifying that with you guys right now. If you just, wanting to use the watch as an extension of your phone you're gonna have your phone with you you do not need a data plan you do not need to get the four hundred five hundred dollar ridiculous price version out there you can get a used one or the simple one that's three hundred dollars and you're set because it's just they can consider the gear as being the top line gear device where it it it's pretty much has a standalone function but that's not necessary now, for those of you who are asking about the call forwarding and the cellular function, what that means is you are using the watch by itself, meaning these two are not going to be near each other. They're going to be separate. Like you leave this guy at home and you're walking around with that in public. And that's what, that's what standalone means. Standalone means that this guy is in 4G or, or you know, there's confusion. Yes, the advertiser is 3G, but before I fact to reset my watch, I'm going to show you guys. And while I talk, standalone means you are not tethered to the phone. That means Bluetooth is off. And then you're just using the watch and it's connected to the cellular network. So right now it's going to connect to the cellular network. Give it a second. And as you can see, I'm going to show you in the camera, I have 4G service right there. So I know there's a bit of confusion out there from Samsung's own stupid marketing campaign, but it does have 4G connection. So the internet browsing and stuff have been fine. But once again, if you're not going to be using call forwarding, please stop watching this video because you don't need to watch the rest of it. You are going to be just fine. But for those of you wanting the full in-depth call forwarding feature, meaning you're going to be using the watch. I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm just trying, I'm trying to clarify this. Um, it's you're going to be using the watch outside. All right. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen the link up down below um, just to skip forward to the actual setup. But if you if you stuck through this, just please listen. So the call forwarding is for when you're on the 3G, 3G, 4G service and you want calls directed from your phone to your watch when you're away from your phone. Now, for those of you who know how call forwarding works is essentially you need two devices with two separate numbers, meaning you have your regular phone and a secondary phone, so like an emergency phone. So let's say you're not near this device, but when a call comes in, you want it to be directed to another another device, like a Skype or a different phone. That's call forwarding. It's just bouncing off and sending it. So call forwarding to your watch is the same concept. It's gonna come to your phone, then goes right to the watch when you're outside the network. Um, so there's that. So if you understand, let's continue on. So 
for you to get the call forwarding function, make sure you have a proper SIM card. So I took the SIM card out and that's how the SIM card looks. I'm not going to show the other side just because it shows my SIM card numbers and I don't kind of want people hacking into it. But that's what it is right there. I mean, it's pretty small. Let's compare it to my, my Samsung's. So there's micro SIM cards. Then you got these SIM cards to show you the size difference. So what, what your preconception of a micro SIM card is actually smaller. So that's the size difference right now. And this is a Note 4. I thought this SIM card was small. No, it gets smaller. So just keep that in mind when you guys are, if you buy it secondhand or if you're getting it, a, a, if you're getting it used or stuff, just make sure you get that guy. Because just, you, just because you have this SIM card in your prepaid phone or whatnot doesn't mean they can just slip it right on. So just keep that in mind when you guys are looking around. I did receive a question about that. So, All right, so let's go into the actual setup of the watch before I do any call test. So what I'm going to do is, first and foremost, I'm going to forget my watch on my, wa on my device here. So connections, Bluetooth, Samsung Gear S. I'm going to unpair. Now it's not paired anymore. Next thing I'm gonna do, go into my apps, uninstall the gear app. I'm literally gonna do this from scratch for you guys. So I know apparently AT&T, Samsung, Sprint, no one's been of help lately to some of you. So let me be your guide. So before I move on, I uh, just wanna mention for the Sprint users using the AT&T Gear S, uh, comments are pointed out to me that your guys' uh, gear manager and your gear S does not have the auto call forwarding function, meaning you sh when the devices go out of range from one another, they don't actually turn on the call forwarding for you guys automatically. You actually have to turn it on and off manually via the swipe down menu or going to the call menu on the Gear S. So just keep that in mind when you're watching my video. It's the setup should be similar or around the similar way but you guys have to turn on and off manually apparently. If it has changed, please go ahead and leave a comment down below if they have updated this. Uh, updated this. Um, Verizon users. Um, no Verizon user actually really has commented on my board yet about this, but the setup should relatively be the same. The operating systems and the way it looks should be similar. So if it's different from what you see now, please let me know in the comment section down below as well. So without further ado, let's dive right on in. Once again, I've already, um, I've unpaired my my phone um, from the gear s as well as i've uninstalled the gear app the the gear uh, the gear manager from my phone next thing to do now is to factory reset my watch which i hate doing because i have to reset up later but i'm doing it for you guys so we go down to reset gear so actually really simple yes all data will be clear that's fine with me it's not really fine but it's all right now it's gonna factor reset, so we gotta wait. So let's let's get forward. All right, I believe it is done factor resetting. So let's go ahead and turn it on like you just got it for the first time. So you're pressing all the the home button. There we go. So for, the, for those of you who haven't had a Gear S, so this is what it's gonna look on initial boot up. So install Samsung Gear device on your Samsung Gear app on your mobile device. All right, so you gotta connect. So now you have to connect the Gear S to your phone. So let's go ahead and re-download the Gear app. Sorry, you have to go to Galaxy Apps. I totally forgot about that. So you go to Galaxy Apps. There we go. Gonna look up the Gear Manager. Gear. Samsung Gear Manager. We're gonna install. Accept and download. We're gonna let that install. Open. All right. Now we're gonna to wanna to connect. So apparently the, my Bluetooth is already on. It already detects the Gear S out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on. Once it connects, say, okay, okay. So I know, th I know, I know this is dragging, I know this is a little bit dragging on, but this is gonna be literally, I just, I really wanna show you guys what each step looks like in order to set this device up properly. So I'm not sure what the idiots at the AT&T store or, and stuff are gonna tell you, but I mean, this is how I, I did it out of the box this way. So I don't know what they told you, but I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that this works and solves some of your guys' issue. I had one comment to tell me that it was maybe a SIM card error. Uh, PC tried everything I, I told him to do and said that there were still, it was connecting remotely, but it wasn't 
sending the calls over. So that kind of confused me a bit, but it could be a SIM card issue from the company. So, I mean, the SIM card in my Gear S is right out of the box from when I ordered it off Amazon. I'm sorry, I ordered it from Best Buy. <laughs> There we go, legal notices, blah. I know I should read these things, but I just agree. Understand, finish. You guys can have my life, don't worry. All right, now it says it's, they're both connected now. Now it says clock up. It's gonna go through, it's gonna start teaching how to use the device, like as always, so you can go. All right, gear set up. That's the default, that's the default uh, watch face. Let's go ahead and set up the call forwarding now. So what I first do is I'm going to go into, I'll, oh, initially it's going to ask you what notifications that you want to get. Uh, that's I know this is an initial setup. So go ahead and go ahead and click on the all the apps that you have that you want to receive notifications for. I'll set up that later. But for now, okay, here we go. It's already asking me about the auto call forwarding to gear. So I'm not going to read that. I'm not going to read that stuff, but. Essentially, yeah, your, your phone's going to ring a couple times and then it's going to forward to your gear. So I think a lot of people misread that step where they expected the calls to go right to the gear right away. But no, it has to dial for a few seconds and then it will auto kick it to the, the gear S. So yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Leave a voicemail on your gear and then go for it. Okay, you read and you accept. All right. Now I'm going to go into the settings on the app. Go down. Auto call forwarding under the call section. It's reading the settings. There you go. It actually automatically updated the phone number for me. Um, I'm gonna bleep that out, obviously. But if you want, if you need to change it, go ahead and turn on the turn on section, turn it off, go into the number setting, and then input your phone number, your Gear's phone number. So when you actually sign up for the data plan on the Gear S, or putting it on your family plan or your individual plan, they will give you. They're supposed to give you the phone number for the SIM card in the device. And so that's what you put into here. You don't put your own phone number, you put the Gear S's phone number into here. Because that's what's going to tell them to dial where you're going to forward the dialing to. So that's proper. So I'm going to turn that on. Now it's on. All right, I'm going to go back. Put that down. Let's go into the gear. All right, so on so on to the Gear S. So what should the Gear S look like for the call forwarding? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe up. So for the purposes of this video, my number is going to be bleeped out, but I'm going to show you the first three zip codes at least. Um, my cell phone number is 610 and my watch is on 41484. So that's how you can tell there's two different numbers on here. So let me go ahead and let me go ahead and go up here. Sorry, I got to look down. So you want to go into call. Auto call forwarding. So right now, actually too, you're going to see, let me put it up here. You're going to see on the outgoing number, it's currently showing my phone number from, from my Note 4. And the reason is, it's currently right now tethered to my phone. So it is acting like an extension of my phone right now. So when I dial calls or send messages or emails through my watch, it's going to be going through my phone, technically speaking. So you can imagine it's going from here to here, then out. Okay? So once again, it goes when it's tethered, it's going from your phone, I'm sorry, from your watch to your phone and then it goes out. So that's why it's showing you that number. When you are in standalone mode, when it's on the mobile network, which I'm gonna show you in a bit, it's gonna show the Gear S's phone number. So that's how you know when it's gonna be, when it's on the phone network and it's off, all right? So let's go forward. So go, in, go into call forwarding. So when you go into the auto call forwarding menu, it should already be turned on from automatically setting it up through the through the gear manager on your phone. And it should be turned on. The number settings should be showing the gear S's phone number. Um, so right now, as you see, it should be 484 under the bleep right there. So it's already on, but like I like I showed you on the phone, you can do the same thing. Just hit that little button to turn the turn on and turn off. Go into the number settings. And they can change the phone number again. So it's fine for me. So I'm going to go back, turn it back on. Yes. So actually, look, it actually asked you right there. So I'm going to turn it back on again. All right. But it literally quickly just asked me, is it your gear's phone number? And I just said yes to it. So there's that. So it's already on. Now, how do we actually test this? How does it actually work? So currently right now, it's going to be in standalone mode. So let me just go ahead and back out, back to the home screen. And the way I'm going to test this is I'm going to call my, my two devices from Skype. So you guys are going to be able to see it work. So right now it's tethered. So the way tethered mode works is, so let me dial my phone right now. So it's dialing, I'm, I'm calling my phone from my computer. You should see it ring pretty soon here. Receiving a call automatically picks up on the Gear S. Look, it's already there. 
you can make calls from sorry you, you're going to receive calls from your phone and you can be, you can answer it on your watch normally you don't need a cell you don't need a data plan or connection for that function to work while it's tethered to the watch you do not need that sorry i keep repeating the same thing but i'm just trying to drive that point across you do not need to have this connected to the mobile network to make calls or send messages if you're connected to your mobile your mobile phone all right but now for those of you who want it the call forwarding and to use the watch as a standalone device that means you're not gonna be with your phone let's go ahead and test that and I'm gonna test the call forwarding as well so what you have to do is in order to test that while these two devices are next to one another is you have to physically detach them so what I'm gonna do is first of all I'm gonna to go to connections mobile networks and it should technically be on auto on or off I'm gonna put it as always on so now it's gonna be fully connected to the network Step number two, go back, go to Bluetooth, turn off the Bluetooth connection. Bluetooth has been disconnected and your watch should tell you, there you go, watch is telling me it's been disconnected, it's disconnected. Give it a few moments for the call for to kick in. There you go. Now it says connected remotely. It says connected to, with Samsung Gear S remotely. It's connected through the network now. Give it another moment. So for those of you looking for instantaneous, it doesn't happen instantly. It happens kind of gradually over time. But look, there we go. Now it's saying for call forwarding four calls to Gear S has to been turned on via remote connection. So once the phone detects that they're connected remotely, it would automatically turn on the call forwarding. And for those of you, like I just said, that are on the Sprint network, you have to manually turn this on apparently. I do not have a manual screenshot of that, but I think for those of you who are users will understand this and just want to make just you know just try that point you have to manually turn it on and off when they're connected remotely and, and when they're not so now the call for and the, and how you know the call for is on your gear device is that little oops sorry is that little phone icon in the top left corner that's how you're going to tell now one thing i want to mention before moving on is that some of you are going to get the message of call forwarding error that means it wasn't able to connect properly or it, it's having trouble establishing it and that happens because if you leave your device so let's say you sat down you got up and you got a drink of water or you just left in the bathroom for a few moments and I had this happen to me this may have has happened to some of you so you've disconnected and the phone is now in the process of connecting remotely and turning on the call forwarding but all of a sudden you return back immediately so you reestablish the Bluetooth connection so now the device is trying to turn on call forwarding, but your watch, if you set it on auto on or off, because what auto on or off that means is when it detects that the Bluetooth is connected, it's always off the network. And then when it's not connected to Bluetooth, it automatically turns on the network. So if you have that setting on, and let's say you come back from what you were doing, so in the middle of it trying to establish call forwarding, you turn the Bluetooth connection back on. Now you've kind of cut off that call forwarding because these two are trying communicating with another saying call forwarding, but you just reconnect it. So you just kind of block that happening. So that at that point, it's going to constantly keep giving you an error, meaning that it's on the watch, especially because it's going to be connected to your phone, tethered just fine. You can get, you can receive calls, get messages, but that icon on the top left, on the top left corner, is going to have like a, that phone with a slash through it because it's, it was in the middle of trying to establish that connection. So that's where the error is going to happen. And the only way to get rid of that is one of two ways. It's either canceling it, so you cancel you cancel that little icon that comes up. It's hard for me to replicate right now just because I have a really bad ankle. Um, I just got out of surgery. I'm in the healing process. I can't just run back and forth. But uh, you can trust my word on that. Is when you get that little error, it's going to come up. You can either hit cancel or OK, try to reestablish the call forwarding. If it's not going away after you hit cancel a few times, just restart the device. It's really simple. Press and hold the, the home button. You're going to receive the power off and the restart. Just go ahead and restart. And so actually that brings up another good point. You press and hold the home button, you're going to get this menu. And this is where you can turn on Wi-Fi and all that stuff, as well as manage your mobile network service. Uh, I'm going to put it back on, auto on or off. Actually, no, before I do that, I'll leave it on because i got to test the call forwarding now. So let's move on. So once we've gotten through all those hurdles, now call forwarding is finally established on the phone. So let's go ahead and call my device and show you what that will look like. And now this time this won't react. You see, now it's it now it's dialing, but this is not reacting at the same time. 
So give it a few seconds here. I kind of count it about 10 to 15 seconds ish. And then it's going to kick over to the watch. So you're going to see it shut off here at any moment now. And then it's going to kick it forward. So shut off here. Now it's going to the watch. Now I'm going to answer on my watch. I don't want that feedback to happen, but you just saw what happened, right? So it dialed, I don't have the buzzer on, but it dialed for about four to five rings, shuts off here and then kicks it immediately over to the watch. Once you've tested that for yourself, now you know call forwarding is working. On top of that, you're gonna, you're gonna get forward all your notifications, I've noticed. All my notifications and text messages come through the call forwarding as well because they're connected remotely. So I still get all my alerts while I'm away from my phone. That's, just, that's an awesome function in my opinion. So there's that. That's how you're going to test it. Now another thing you want to test too is for those of you that just want to use the watch as it is, you can call the watch directly as well. And I'm going to call right from my, right from my phone actually. So let's say you lost it or whatnot. I'm going to go down. I have it under as my watch. There you go. I'm going to call it. Now I'm calling my watch. Boom. There you go. So not only can you get call forwarding, but you can also treat your watch as a proprietary device. Meaning you can, you can have people call your device right away. So you can have people just call your watch right away if call forwarding isn't working or if you just want to replace your phone with the watch. So that's how they work. So I mean that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of it. I mean, that's, that is the full setup from scratch to finish and testing. Now I want to, I want to put my watch back to normal. So while I do that, I'm going to give you a couple final thoughts on there. So I'm putting it back to on and off. Okay. I'm going to put it back to retethered mode. So actually while I do this, let me see if I can get that error to come up for you guys. Apparently I couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get that error to pop up, but if you set it up properly this way, you shouldn't be getting that error. Uh, when I first did it myself, I was putting in my own phone number into the watch back and forth and it was a lot of hit and miss. I was getting a lot of errors in the beginning, but now that I've learned about it, the, it shouldn't be giving you that error if you follow these instructions to the T like this. Now, if you are still getting an error where you've done all these steps and you call your, you've called your device and it's not kicking it forward or call forwarding is not being established, then um, like another YouTuber, another uh, user told me was uh, that it could be a SIM card issue. But that confuses me as well too is because if they're connected remotely and you can call your watch and your watch actually answers, then there's an issue. So once again, before you guys run back and, you know, you know, cry wolf on that, make sure you just, you just check on here. So then call forwarding in the gear app, make sure your watch's phone number is showing as well as on your watch. Make sure you go to make sure under your call forwarding here on the auto call forwarding, the number setting is showing you um, the watch's phone number there as well. If you have both of these set up, you should be good to go. And and then my, my suggestion for you, for those of you using your watch with your phone in conjunction, make sure Bluetooth is always on and the mobile network is always on auto on and off. For those of you trying to use it as a standalone and you want to test it, just make sure mobile network is always on, always on, and the Bluetooth is off when you want to test it, but make sure you turn it back on so you can reconnect to your, your phone, as well as use any Bluetooth headsets. Um, and then for those Sprint users, uh, make sure you go ahead and you manually turn it on and off when you are on the go, if you don't get the automatic function, if they don't address that for you guys. Um, and then Verizon users and T-Mobile users, I think there's a few of you out there um, the setup should be the same as you saw it here. So that's it. So for those of you who stuck through this entire video, I apologize for the length of this video because, you know, I know it was long, but I really wanted to address a lot of the questions I received and go through the actual full setup of the devices. Um, if I haven't answered your question, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. I really do make it a habit of mine to answer your questions right away. Um, and address them in the best way I can. Um, so I really hope that this guy, this this guide has really helped you. If not, let me know with thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, and if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more how tos and more reviews um, and future reviews I will do on other devices as well. Um, so thank you again. Like if if you if you actually stuck through it to this point, 
Um, just thank you for watching this video. I know there's a lot of other how-tos out there and a lot of other YouTubers that you can go to, but you watch my video. So thank you, and I really do appreciate your time um, and for stopping by. So, But that's it for this video. So just you know, have a nice day, evening, which whatever time of day it is, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching my video. If you have additional questions on more Gear S functions or Samsung Gear devices, go ahead and click that playlist right next here. If you have additional questions or just want to know more about other reviews and unboxings I've done, hit that next playlist button down there. If you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button down below to support my channel. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, both positive and negative, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer all your questions. Thanks for stopping by and see you in the next video.